Hello and welcome everybody to the Reister's Town Sportsplex in Reister's Town, Maryland. I'm David Stearns. Joined with me is John Baranowski. Getting set to call the matchup between UMBC Retrievers and the visiting Rowan University Profs. Yes. Yes, indeedy. We'll wait till the, after the anthem to reveal the secret information pertaining as to who will be starting in goal. Oh, I thought we were doing that now. No, we do that after after the anthem, buddy. Oh, see, that's what happens when I'm the oh, new guy. Oh, man. You, you didn't get the itinerary. No, I didn't, I didn't, get, the, I didn't get that memo. Could you give me that memo? Well, anybody that's watching us right now on Ustream, uh, thank you for joining us. And as always, crossicefeed.com carrying the stream on the Ustream tab. Check out our broadcast schedule there as well. After this weekend, we will have Georgetown and Willie P. William Patterson next weekend, so check it out. But tonight, the contest at hand is UMBC versus Rowan. Oh, they sound so unhappy about announcing the Rowan University props who are 11-0-0, and they are at the number two spot in the Southeast ranking. As we are posted right next to their bench, so we're going to get some uh, great audio, I'm sure, from Coach John Caulfield and uh, his staff. <laughs> As they pile in the bench, we're going to have the starting lineups and the anthem. And Brian Bennett scraping up some ice there. You know, let's go into the uh, let's go into the catch twenty two design starting goaltenders. John, who do we have? Starting in net for the Rowan University props will be a, uh, Brian Bennett, who has played seven games and is seven and zero on the season with a one point six five goals against average, two shutouts and uh, 171 shots against for a 94% save percentage. Not too shabby. Well, who's on the other end? On the other end is uh, Trevor Miller, who has two games played, one and one on those, and uh, he has one and a half uh, goals against. So obviously he played half of a game at some point there. Uh, one shutout and he has a 94% save percentage, so not too shabby there either. Though a lot fewer games to deal with, a lot fewer games to see those trends setting up. So it'll certainly be interesting to see how these goaltenders shake out. Well, here's our starting lineup for UMBC Retrievers. Colin Devlin starting on defense. The Highlands Ranch, Colorado native. Gross Point Park native. Michigan, of course, is the captain, Nick Yost, starting on defense. And the alternate captain, Sean O'Connor, will start up at the front there. Sean O'Connor. And DJ Fadler, former Washington Junior National. Zach Tracy from Marysville, Maryland will round out the forwards. And of course, Trevor Miller will finish things out here on the starting lineup. Well, Anthem and face off, and here we go. Thank you. Some hockey opening face off coming up here. And we are on the scaffold here, and uh, whoa, man, it is shaky. 
We do apologize if we have any shaky camera work here, but I'm sure Phil's going to do a great job as we rally the troops at the benches here. And uh, happy Veterans Day weekend to everybody. And, of course, thank you to those of you who have served and are continuing to serve and protect our country and the freedoms in which we enjoy. Of course, and happy Remembrance Day to uh, those of you in Canada listening. There you go. Happy Armistice Days to those overseas. All right. We got it all covered here, all bases covered. And we're about to watch some war on ice, if you will. Well, obviously, it never gets to, to the same level of combat, but everyone has their battles. Of course. And the face-off one back into the UMBC zone, and it's Nick Yost down there to chase. He's being shadowed by Paulo. And it'll be Yost that'll get it along the half boards far side, led out through center, trying to move his way up it is Sean O'Connor, but Rowan will pop it right back into the UMBC zone as Nick Yost will be back there to chase it, picking it up in the far corner, up along the high glass, and out through center, They're trying to get it along the far wing. I believe that was, uh, yeah, that was number 28. There's already a quick change there. Oh, no, it's Zach Tracy. He was on the starting lineup. I do beg your pardon. I forgot he was up there, but as this one comes right down to Bennett, Bennett. Uh, sticking it out to the front so he can glove that one down. We'll get our first stop at the play with 19-26 left here in the first. Obviously no score as we get some fresh legs out on for both sides. Well, Rowan's not going to take any chances and the goaltender knows that uh, you get to that puck, you stop it. Never, never take extra chances. Matt Bloom taking the face off, winning it for you. see up to the point. Here comes a shot. Scores! That'll be 8.50. Please pull around to the next window. Well, so much for taking extra chances. A rocket from up top, top shelf. Might have well had a vapor trail and an in-flight movie on that thing. A beautiful shot right to the back of the net. My goodness, what a rocket from Colin Devlin opening the scoring here just 38 seconds into this, this contest. Oh, my goodness. Well, here's the call. So Durante getting the assist on that on the face-off win. But Dan Durante picking up the tally, uh, the assist on that tally from Colin Devlin. So here we go. O'Connor over to Bloom. Bloom trying to set it up into the slot, but not to his avail. Now it's being worked along, uh, around down low by Dan Armstrong. And it'll be Dan Durante with it now, trying to squeeze it up to the front behind the goal line, but instead it'll be Rowan that'll pick up along the half boards. Kept in nicely there by the Retrievers. Good work ethic by Cody Silver, and a nice check there. Yeah, finishing his check is Jean-Luc Durante on Rogers. This one goes down the length of the ice. No icing there. It's a couple of players are making some changes. Actually, a wholesale change there for Rowan. And UMBC trying to get it back out of the neutral zone. A little too high to glove down there. Here comes a chance up front. Rowan walking in, taking a shot. A great save by Miller as he got in front of that one. And Ryan McGuire coming in all alone on Miller. Up close, point blank. But here comes another chance the other way for the Retrievers. But he had his pocket picked. And that was Travis Joyle that had an opportunity. We're working with it now, the Retrievers popping it in deep by Paget And being chased along the far side. And Rowan trying to kick it out, but had it tied up along the half boards for a second. Now they'll get another try at it as it's sent down by McGuire into the neutral zone. It'll be picked up by Devlin, who picked up that early tally in this game. I keep on saying tally. I don't mean Daryl tally. I do apologize. Football reference in a hockey game. How dare I? I just What's wrong with you? What's that? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I know. This well, one's deflected off a of row and out of play with the stoppage. 17.47 left here in the first. We've already seen plenty of mistakes going on on the defensive end. Turnovers leading to breakaways, or at least pretty close. Both goaltenders have had been hung out to dry at least once, and we're still very early in this contest. And Nick Yost pinching up into the play. Still going with it. Takes a shot on Bennett to save a rebound. He'll glove this one down before anyone has a chance to wrangle it out of his reach. Well, sometimes you just have to call your own number and take it yourself, and that's what the captain did. He knew when to take it into his own hands. Captain Yost doing a fine job there on the ice. Here, Fritzy, Fritzy taking a shot through it. Actually deflected off of a Rowan player, had a funny redirect, and right into the breadbasket of Bennett. That had some real height on it, and, and for such an accidental shot, that's dangerous. And Fritz back in the draw here as he wins it back, but instead Rowan will pick it up. Coming away with it now is, I believe that's number 24. I don't have him on my roster. That's an interesting name, isn't it? Up top to the point. Picked up by Loney. Loney taking a shot and saved by Miller. And it'll be Fritz with a near side pass. Trying to hook up there with Naring. Thomas Naring couldn't get a hold of it. And coming back the other way is mystery man number 24. And we'll go with Taylor Pyatt. And be along the left wing here with Thomas Naring. He turns it over, though, and it's picked up by Schneck. 
Tech trying to take a shot, but it doesn't get through traffic. And back the other way comes Colin Devlin, who puts it into the bench, well, almost into the bench, onto the bench and off the boards and in, and goes over to the far side. Kept in up top, the blue line by Fadler. Fadler gets crunched into the boards. It squirts free to the far circle, trying to work it around. Sean O'Connor's trying to find it. And an extra effort there by Tracy does not work out in his favor. Rowan has it for the moment. And a hard check there, getting the red carpet treatment. It was Cody Silbert, the cold in New York native. And Fadler with a backhand pass out blindly behind, but a two-on-one developing the other way. And here comes a chance now. Tom Snaring, or Zach Tracy takes a shot, and it goes off the crossbar and out. Ding fries are done. And we'll get a stoppage of play with 16-27 left here in the first one nothing. Dogs. We're already seeing a lot of smart decisions by UMBC. Yeah, they had the one defensive breakdown that led to a quick breakaway, but they knew not to go after that pass. They knew to just keep on following through, and it led to a two-on-one and a pretty decent opportunity. Off the crossbar and out. And a shot does not make its way through traffic. And it's pulling the trigger on that one with Selbert. Of course, Selbert playing first full weekend recently after uh, coming back from an injury. So good to see him back in the lineup. And uh, quite a solid, solid guy on the back end. So we'll have a puck out of play onto the far side. 16-17 remaining here in the first period of play. 1-0 UMBC. Bloom loses that face off to Paulo as it goes back behind the goal. And trying to set it up along the near side is Moen. Eric Moen, and a hard check there delivered by Bloom, but it's Rowan coming back the other way. The shot taken by Paulo goes wide. Back up from the far corner, Rowan still trying to gain control of the puck here. And a hard check by Paulo. He's taking out his man. And now the Retrievers are going to come back the other way with it. Having a little trouble with his footing is Selbert. Selbert with that flow. Look at him taking that shot. Goes wide. And he's got the mop in the back. How about that look? Classic hockey player. And Bloom, the alternate captain, over along the near side. Dan Durante fitting it to the front with a shot. Oh, and almost a chance there to stuff it home was Dan Armstrong as the captain for the Rowan University props. As J.C. Caulfield takes his shot long distance on the Miller, and he steers that one aside. And another shot long distance gets deflected away by Selbert. And it goes over to Caulfield along the far half boards, but the Retrievers are going to try to squeak it out here on a second attempt. They don't get it out. The props will keep it in, backhanding it right down to the glove of Miller. So shots 4-4, four to four, one nothing score in favor of the Retrievers. 15-17 left here in the first. It's interesting to see that Rowan University is already uh, playing a, a lot of stretch play. And I don't mean down the ice. I mean they're literally taking their sticks and going at full extension. You can't get much power out there. You can't have that much control when you're extended like that. And yet they just keep going with it. Keep it a little close to your body. You'll do better. Rowan wins that faceoff, but they can't pick it up at the point, so instead it'll be the Retrievers coming back the other way with Sean O'Connor. Sean O'Connor taking a shot, Bennett to save the rebound, went loose over to the near circle, trying to sweep it up to the front of Zach Tracy, but it'll be picked up instead by Travis Trent. Trent sending it over to Caulfield. Caulfield gets checked by Yost, and the puck does go out of the zone, and coming back in was DJ Fadler. I don't think he crossed the line completely, but they whistle it dead for the offside. That was certainly close enough to, I, I, think, I think even the player knew that. Another face-off along the far side of the neutral zone, just outside the prop zone. And it's won by UMBC. Fadler trying to clear it through, but the Rowan props are going to pick it up and send it the other way with Shane Brennan dumping it into the far corner of the retriever zone. And Yost will pick it up, and he'll carry it up along over to the far side, over to Fadler. Fadler dumps it in, and going in there to chase his Yost. Man, they must have a great communication system as someone's back there to recover for him every time he pinches. That is the case, Colin Devlin, and it looked like Sean O'Connor replaced Yost for the moment, but working back behind the goal line, the Retrievers trying to feed it to the front. Fadler gets crunched on the boards. Here comes an opportunity, but it went on the wrong stick side of Sean O'Connor, who couldn't wrangle it down, and it's Alec Nikolai coming back the other way. With a pass back and a shot from Paulus going wide. Along the half boards near side, Brennan putting it deep. And back there to get it is Paulus. Polis looking for an option up front. Well, he drops it back there, and he goes into the slot. Nobody there to pick it up. Oh, an interference call is going to be coming up here to Rowan in a second. I believe Shane Brennan took out Fadler a little too, uh, well, out of the play, I guess. So that's it. We're going to get our first green turtle power play in favor of the Retrievers with 14 minutes to play here in the first. one nothing dogs. Seemed a pretty obvious call to make. It made a lot of sense to uh, go ahead and make that call, certainly away from the play. Textbook interference. Like I was saying, with players reaching out with their sticks, that includes Brian Bennett. He had that stick way out there for one really successful poke check and then he lost his stick right thereafter. Dangerous play for a goaltender. And the Retrievers on the Green Turtle power play. The official sponsors of the power play. Check them out at two restaurant park drive and here comes a drive to the net and Bennett makes a save. No rebound coming. Green Turtle in Owings Mill, Maryland. Check them out. 
for great deals. And any fans in attendance will look at the back of their ticket and see a $5 off discount off of any entree. Ooh. 146 remains on that power play. And the faceoff won by the Retrievers, working it down low as Dan Durante. Durante looking at the slot. Here comes Bloom with a shot. Bennett makes the save, but the rebound goes off behind the goal. And the Retrievers trying to look to run the gambit here is trying to keep it in with Bloom. Bloom couldn't get it in past the captain. It was Jonathan Paulo. They have co-captains on this team, as I see. This one goes wide. Miller almost steering that one back into his own goal, but he had it just perfectly right with the angle to get it back behind the goal line. Yost. Setting up O'Connor over to the near side. And a pass over by Thomas Naring. Naring couldn't handle it there as he got checked off the puck and props clear it all the way down to the length of the ice. Yost getting crunched into the boards there. A little retribution thanks to Sean O'Connor. Back the other way they come. Three on two on the power play. O'Connor over to Durante. Durante trying to drag it through, but it was interrupted there by Paulus. Dan Durante back in the near corner. Durante leaving it for O'Connor. Sean O'Connor back to Durante. Durante looking to stuff it short side. It's loose up front in the blue paint. And Bennett holds on. And Bennett taking out the trash. He takes down Jean-Luc Durante. And brotherly love out there as Jean-Luc and Daniel are on the same power play unit here. With 51 seconds to play on the man advantage. Again with the stick work. Bennett clearly took down. What is that? Durante. Uh, a dangerous play right in front simply because. Well, you're moving in slow motion trying not to hit the goaltender. And sure enough, you're being hauled down. And the puck squirts free uh, as Rowan clears a pass Rafferty. And dangerously played there. Paulus was pitching in. And doing some great forechecking on the penalty kill for Rowan. Paulus still with it in the far blue line. Puts it in deep. And a solid kill here. The remaining 30 seconds left on the penalty to Shane Brennan. And coming through center is Zach Tracy. Tracy, far circle, takes a shot. It's deflected. The rebound coming off along the side of the net. And it'll be picked up by Bennett, who is out just a little bit. Away from the blue paint to make the cover up with 22 seconds left on the green turtle power play. He's really quick to cut down on those angles. He got caught out of position once already, way in front of the crease. And while well, there, he was certainly out in no man's land. Ben Rafferty setting it up up top to Colin Devlin, who has the only goal in this game. Playing catch there with Tracy. Devlin back over to the near side of Rafferty. Rafferty couldn't reach for it. DJ Fadler trying to put the pass up to Rafferty, but instead it's swept up and sent down the length of the ice by Alex Zakowski. So five seconds, that'll just about do it for the first Green Turtle power play opportunity for the Retrievers. They'll go 0 for 1 with 12 minutes to play here in the first with a 1-0 dog score. And through center, deflected deep in there by Jean-Luc Durante. Down there to chase is Fadler, but Rowan gets there first. And Fadler gets a little support from Jean-Luc. Jean-Luc Durante trying to move it along the boards over to the half boards. Nobody there to pick it up. So Fadler's going to move his way over there. But he's got a couple of props to work away from. As it comes over to Shane Brennan. Brennan could not clear it out. Nick Yost forcing him in as it goes into the near corner. Over to Lowney. Lowney over to the opposite side. Having trouble handling an escape with Schnicker. I, be I beg your pardon, it's Schickner. It comes over to the near side. Rowan props are trying to find an exit lane. And he'll get it as it squeezes past Nick Yost and goes down into the retriever zone. Back there to Chase. It's Matt Kelly. Matt Kelly having to drop it back for Yost. Back over to Kelly. Kelly couldn't handle that pass. But it goes over to Moen. Moen's going to look for an open lane. Doesn't get it deep in the retriever zone, but just for a moment it is inside the retriever zone, but sent all the way to length into the prop zone. No icing. Eric Moen trying to set up a pass through center here. And it goes over to Monix. Monix putting it in deep to Miller. Miller trying to move it along the near boards, near corner. And Nick Yost will pick it up, putting it high in through the neutral zone. It'll be sticked down. Doesn't go very far as Moen was there to get it at center. And moving their way back in is Monix, and he is just a bit offside. 10.41 left here in the first. Well, lots of back and forth action. I'm rather impressed to see that uh, Rowan has, has killed that power play so effectively. An impressive look there, not letting too many opportunities through. That's what you need to do, and that explains why they're number two. And coming back the other way, it's Matt Bloom trying to get around two men there, but not to his avail will he find an opening. So he'll get it back, though, at the red line, coming back across the blue line, along the near side. And he chips it all the way deep behind Bennett. They're back there to retrieve it. It's Moen. Moen trapping it up in his skates, having a little bit of trouble there, but he gets away from two dogs. They looked a little rabid for that puck. And the backhand pass out through to the neutral zone, picked up by Monix. Monix along the near side, having trouble with Bloom trying to take him out with the check. But it goes deep. Taylor Pyatt back there to get it. Pyatt up top to the blue line. Morelli taking a shot. Miller to save the rebound. He's loose up front. And nobody knows what's going on here as there's some pushing and shoving. I think maybe a Rowan Prof had his stick in the cookie jar. 
halfway through this first period. one nothing Retrievers on a Colin Devlin goal. Well, he certainly had a good look at that puck uh, off the shot right down that shooting lane. And you can see all the way from uh, stick to pad. Yeah. I mean, I'm aside from the imminent death oh, yeah. that seems to await us <laughs> at this... Uh, the shaky this scaffold, shaky yeah. scaffolding, yes. That's a pretty good, pretty good look. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your scaffold. Rowan winning that drop, putting it over to the far side there as Dougherty has it. Dougherty trying to put it through traffic. Doesn't make its way down there. There are a couple of Rowan props ready to work with it, but it comes over to Fadler. Fadler working across the line, looking for O'Connor, but O'Connor tried to give a return pass, but it'll be picked up by the speedy Andrew Dougherty. Dougherty still going down to chase. Tall guy, thin guy, really moving it. That's all I got to say about him. He is all over the ice, and he knows where to find the puck, that's for sure. Sending it down low, and it'll be picked up there. I'm not sure who that, I believe that is the alternate captain, Eric Schneck. That'll be picked up at the high slot by Sean O'Connor, who leads it out in the neutral zone. He'll tap it in lightly. Still waiting for some support to come back in with him, but he'll take out his man on the boards as DJ Fadler finds the puck. Here comes a chance with that shot. Oh, and Zach Tracy gets absolutely demolished as he took that shot. He just went wide. Sean O'Connor finding it. DJ Fadler looking for it. Rowan will find it instead. It'll be Eric Schneck now leading it out in the neutral zone. Schneck along the near side, dumping it into the far corner of the retriever zone. Both teams getting some changes in here with nine minutes to play in the first. The intensity has picked up in this game, Johnny. Absolutely. And Cody Selbert with it now back in his own zone. Up along the far right wing. It'll be chipped in by Jared Padgett. Padgett looking for it there as it came up along the glass and out. Nick Yosel greeted up at the red line, looking to re-enter the Rowan Prop zone. It'll be picked up at center by Jean-Luc Durante, up at the red line, far boards, putting it into the far corner inside the Rowan Prop zone. Back there to chase it now, along the backhand feed out, and it does get deflected through, thanks to Tyler Sch Schnickner. Schnickner had a good look on that one, but he gets it back in his own zone, sends it over to Trent, along the far side of the blue line, and the Rowan Props looking for some zone entry into the Retriever's zone. The Retrievers aren't going to have any of it. Uh, kind of keeping stock up there. They're kind of playing a 1-3-1 one, one right now, which I think is interesting. Well, I think I'm far more uh, interested in the, the tempo that UMBC seems to be controlling this game with. They speed it up, they slow it down almost at will. Uh, rather impressive and always a good thing when you can manage that. And Yo's feeding it up along the far wing. Kicked down nicely with his boot. That's Eric Moen that'll kick it down low. Yo's back there to find it along the near side boards over to Alec Hannock. Hannock could not clear it out. And it was a pinching effort there by Logan Rogers. Now Chance in the slot, working his way is Alec Nikolai. Nikolai trying to move it through. Here comes a shot right in on Miller, who makes the save on a Shane Brennan shot. 7.35 remains here. Rowan hanging on here, creating some offense inside the retriever zone. My real question is, well, two questions. It's two-parter. They're real questions, right? They're real questions. One, yeah. if they have faculty versus student charity games, who's called the profs? <laughs> and if they have any faculty teams, do they call themselves the students? Aha. Uh -huh. Well said, sir. We'll get into the details about Rowan's founding in just a few moments time as John is the historian himself. That's what I do. Now Rowan trapped back inside of their own zone along the near side with a high lofting pass through center. This one's going to miss everybody and it's undoubtedly going to come back in icing. No, they're going to wave it off. They're going to rule that Paulus was there first. So Alekos Paulus is going to get awarded the win on that race. But it does come out through center and trying to find it is Brandon Fritz. Fritz trying to find his way around the props. He'll trap it up along the near board, but it gets out of his reach and sent out by Paulus. Picked up outside of the new, or into the neutral zone and sticked right back in by Morelli. Morelli sending it across the ice over to Dowdy. Dowdy, apparently a defenseman here. Yes, he is. Dowdy is a defenseman, but man, is he moving. Here comes a chance on Miller. What a save by Miller as trying to go five hole was Rob Wilworth. Oh, man. He got stuffed. Well, I, I think the goalie's <laughs> pad is what got stuffed. Yeah. He actually had to pull it out of inside of his pad. Uh, a little cold against the leg never hurt. Speaking of cold, this is one of the coldest rinks I've ever worked in. Next to the old Piney Orchard Ice Arena where the Retrievers used to play. They picked the cold barns. I think that's on purpose. You certainly need to go for the one at uh, St. Bonaventure. Oh, good Lord, yeah. That was the coldest rink I've announced in. Cody Selbert just got schooled in the laws of physics flying into the boards at a certain velocity. Oh boy, a little shaken but not stirred. I'm not advertising that movie. No, I can't Now he drinks it. Heineken, it's all ruined anyway. Oh. Retrievers back in their own zone with 6-10 to play here in the first. One nothing dogs. 
Winding up taking his shot and into the protective netting behind Bennett. The shot goes as a Steelers fan. Looked a little, uh, <laughs> a little shocked as that one came flying in his direction. Well, you choose to stand there. <laughs> Well, the face-off, it appears it will be in the neutral zone because it was ruled an offside. Oh, the face-off won by the Retrievers. Back to Yost. Yost, back in his own zone. And they move it D to D over to the near wing as Sean O'Connor enters the prop zone. He ducks out a check, but he leaves the puck behind as it's Schneck that will put it out through center. Nobody there for the props to pick it up, except they'll find a return on a turnover back to the neutral zone and put it in deep in the Retrievers' territory. Nick Yost looking through his own slot, dangerously playing it through, but it's chipped right back in by Christopher Lowney. And chasing it, Sean O'Connor for the dogs, back in the near corner, back behind his net. He's going to be greeted there by a couple of props. I'm going to try to teach him a thing or two, but it's going to go over to the far boards, up through the high slot, over to O'Connor. Zach Tracy clearing it, and he'll go off on a change. Five and a quarter left here in the first, one nothing dogs. This one sent up high and out of play. Somehow it missed all that protective netting and marked up that beautiful white wall. <laughs> I'm actually not sure how that got through. I know. <laughs> huh. It's the matrix. I'm, I've heard it's you kind of change the laws of physics, but... It's a glitch in the matrix, Johnny. <laughs> oh, is that it? Yes. Well, Brandon Fritz is going to make sure that there isn't a glitch on his faceoff as he drives it through, takes a shot, Bennett to save the rebound. It's loose in the slot there, but the props will find it. It'll be Jonathan Paulo leading it along the left wing, back end to get into the retriever zone. It looks like a few changes are coming here for the props. And back inside the retriever's territory, Alec Hanek trying to move it along the far side, up through the top of the slot, backhands it out through center, and it'll be picked up by Thomas Naring. Naring leading the rush across the blue line, takes a shot, Bennett sticks it down and holds on, and he'll ward off any trouble from Thomas Naring. Holding that stick out there like a, like a katana. Don't cut anybody who comes near him. He's, he's already swinging. Stay away. Yes, a katana. <laughs> but would, would you prefer a claymore, Phil? Possibly. Or maybe a uh, dirk. It's just a little short stick. Well, that's no fun. Oh, sure it is. It's kind of hidden. And a chance now. The props clear it out. Gets past Alec Hanek and coming back the other way. Tra Travis Trent trying to take his shot through traffic. Getting away that one is Devlin. Devlin getting crunched up along the boards. Props looking for some offensive activity here. They're being outshot 11 to 8. And they're outscored 1 to nothing right now with four and a half to go. Down there to chase is Logan Rogers for the props. Back in his own zone in the near corner to the front of the net. Over to the near side, up through middle, and over along the right wing, over to J.C. Caulfield. Caulfield winds up, takes a shot, and it goes wide of Miller. Picking up along the half boards, far side is Travis Trent. Let me get down. He's working with Tim Larkin down low. Larkin looking for it. Over to Trent, up top to the blue line. Kept in with a pinch there by Eric Moen. To the front with a shot and a save there by Miller. As he steers that one along the half boards near side. And then it'll be played up along the far wing. Dan Armstrong setting up Dan Durante. Over to Rafferty with a shot and it just misses the toe pad. The right toe pad of Brian Bennett. And the props are going to come out in the neutral zone. Dan Armstrong giving a little hell there to Travis Trent. The props will clear it in. They'll get some changes here. For the most part, four or five players going off. And he's sticked out of the air by Scarangula. I beg your pardon, it is not Scarangula. It, is, oh, it was Scarangula. Uh, no. There it is. Dowtry. Dowtry. Huh. I'm already giving up on him. I like him. <laughs> this one goes out of play. We'll have a stoppage with 326 to play. I think that one actually went off the official and out. Oh, boy. Thanks, John. Give me a chance to breathe. Tell me what you're seeing. Well, hey, I would like to point out, well, first off, you said with a history of Rowan, they are the profs, short for professors, which it comes out of they were a teaching school for a long time, and that's still what they're known for. Uh, and their mascot, you might have noticed with the logos they have, there's an owl integrated uh -huh. everywhere. Even though they're the profs, though the owl is one of the more scholarly birds, uh, their the mascot is Who Are You? Who, 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 who? And here comes a chance now, coming across the line is Joyo who takes his shot and he goes stuffing right into the bread basket of Brian Bennett. Rowan's doing a lot of chirping here. They're trying to get themselves pumped up as there's 3-11 left here in the first. one nothing Retrievers. Uh, this has been a solid back and forth game at this point. I mean, it's kind of toned down a little bit as far as the domination by the Retrievers. It's evening out, if you will. And Devil on the near side over to Yost. Yost winds up, sends it down low. And Yost just gets his clock cleaned there by... Number 24, I don't know who that is still. It might be Taylor Pilot, Pyatt, for all we know, with the lockout and all. These guys are dropping down to the ACHA. And Dowtry getting checked after touching the puck as it goes over to the near side, over to Morelli. Morelli through the neutral zone. He gets checked by Yost. Not as hard as what Yost has been seeing lately. Yeah, a chance there, Miller having a little trouble with the prof on his shoulder. 
That's usually where the Owls are, right? Yeah, uh, usually. And it's trapped up in the far corner of the retriever zone, waiting for a whistle, and we will get one with the stoppage here. Faceoff undoubtedly coming up to the right of Trevor Miller. You wonder how often Rowan is in a position like this, down one nothing, uh, even through the first period of play. Being down a goal always changes the outlook of everything, obviously. No doubt. Play, you know, uh, sitting at number two, kind of like the Soviet national team, you wonder what they have to do whenever they're down. They've never seen that situation. John O'Connor clearing it into the far corner of the, uh, the Rowan Prof zone. Nobody there to chase. Pyatt's going to pick it up along the near side corner. Scooping it back behind the cage. Having a little trouble with it. Is Schickner, Schickner trying to find the puck still. Schickner gets taken down. I believe it was his own player that took him down. He's trying to lobby that. DJ Fadler took him down, but here comes Pyatt the other way. Pyatt along the near wing. Trying to throw a shot to the front. It's loose in the slot and it'll be picked up by Zach Tracy. Not out. Kept it at the blue line by Schickner. And it'll be a sh long shot that goes through. And just goes wide of the net. Falling while taking that shot is Rob Wilworth, who had a scoring chance earlier one-on-one -on -one with Miller. Less than two minutes to play here in the first period. One-nothing dogs. Rowan looking for offensive activity here. It'll pick up John Paulo trying to move it in deep into the zone. He'll have it at the uh, top of the slot, having trouble putting it from skate to stick. It'll be picked up by the Retrievers as it goes over to Selbert in the near corner of his own zone. Along the half court, trying to move it up to O'Connor. Prost will chip it in. It's Rogers that'll put it in deep. And Selbert down there to chase. And almost a centering feed there for the captain, Paulo. But it is not coming his way as Sean O'Connor will find the puck coming up through center into the prop zone. But he'll turn it over to Paulo, who's going to come back the other way along the far wing. Nice pick off there by Nick Yost, setting it up for Sean O'Connor, who gets demolished there. Linesman was looking at the referee, asking if he was going to call the penalty on that one. And it looks like Paulo's giving a few words to Yost. I think Yost had a few things to say about that hit. It seemed rather clean, though. I mean, he threw him. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he had any strides involved in that prior to it, though. Now one minute to play here in the first period. Puck going all the way down to Bennett, and Bennett's going to elect to hold on as Daniel Durante is pressuring. Once again, uh, UMBC Retrievers Hockey is sponsored by the Hilton Garden Inn in Owings Mills, Maryland. If you're coming to town to watch a Dogs game live, book your stay at the Hilton Garden Inn in Owings Mills, Maryland. Face off one with a point shot that doesn't make its way through traffic. Another attempt there. Yost will keep it in, though, as it's fed along to Armstrong, who puts it deep in the near corner. Bloom trying to work it along the boards. He's got some support from Durante. And being called up top here, Yost is asking for it. He gets it, takes a shot, and it just goes wide. Looking for some deflection up front with 40 seconds to play in the first. But Rowan's going to look to come the other way. No, they won't get a successful breakout here. No, they will. They'll control the puck. We'll give them a little faith there. As Larkin's going to come into the retriever zone, but it'll be the retrievers that'll find it and send it out into neutral. And it's Doubter. Doubter over to the near side. They have a shot cleared in by Travis Trent, but it's cleared out by the Retrievers with 20 seconds to play. And delayed offside on the props is negated as they tag up. He goes deep to Yost. 10 seconds play. Dangerously playing out to the front of his net. Boy, he must be really confident when he does that, eh? Oh, yeah. 10 seconds to go as the props. Doubtry has it back behind his cage, and I think he's going to hold on to it to kill off the rest of the time in this opening frame. So that'll do it for this first period. one nothing UMBC on the visiting Rowan University props. And the shots on goal. Johnny, what do we have in that first period? We got 12 for UMBC and 8 for Rowan. A very evenly matched game. I mean, yes, uh, you, you talk about the, the numbers and, and, and ratios, and I'm probably not that close, but considering the first period of play, considering the opportunities involved, still a very evenly matched game. I think the most impressive thing is that neither team has really had much time down deep in the other team's zone. All of these shots have been from above the circles. Everything has been from long range. Uh, obviously, UMBC a bit more successful on that. Uh, the score is one nothing in favor of the Retrievers. However, there really hasn't been much action in front of the net. That indeed is the case, and yes, sir, you are correct on every point. I have nothing to counter with. That's a rarity, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know what to do. I know. It's because you're scared of your own death, isn't it? You, you, you're facing your own mortality uh -huh. on this rickety scaffolding hey, unit. This scaffold is giving people the best view possible in this rink. We'll tell you that right now. But the view from over here says one nothing Retrievers after one. Stay tuned. Second period action coming up after the intermission. So you're watching Retrievers Hockey here on the Cross Ice Feed. Welcome back, everybody, to the Reisterstown Sportsplex in Reisterstown, Maryland. Getting ready for the second period of play as the UMBC Retrievers lead the Rowan University Props with a score of one to nothing. John, take us through what happened in that first period. Well, in the first period, we had an early shot just about a minute and a half into this contest from the point. 
UMBC tees it up and puts it home top shelf. Since then, it's been a back and forth game, but neither team has had much time deep in enemy territory. Everything has been above the circles. Uh, lots of shots from up top. Lots of uh, trying to move a movement along the outsides, but nothing really, not even into the corners. It has been a very conservative contest. Neither one of these teams wants to be the first one to make a real mistake. So far, UMBC has managed to uh, take the edge on that, but the question is how long can they hang on? As we get set for the second period of play, John Caulfield rallying the troops here for his Rowan University profs. As we have a lovely position here. For those of you that are unfamiliar with where we were doing it before, we were doing a north-south uh, from the opposite end. So now we have this lovely perch courtesy of Stevenson University. We should probably give them some credit for that here at the Reisterstown Sportsplex. So here Next we go. week will be from a dirigible over the ice. <laughs> it's the only way it could get more dangerous. A uh, catwalk, yeah. <laughs> well, am I going to be uh, hanging? Is that what it's going to be? <laughs> Face up one back by Rowan. From the gondola, just yeah. like in Maple Leaf Gardens. Sure. Yeah, let's go with that. Rowan forcing it back into the retriever's zone, but it'll be the retrievers leaving their own zone. Is It'll be Sean O'Connor clearing it in all the way around the boards and all the way over to the half side, the half boards near side. As DJ Fadler will put it in deep into the corner, feeding it to the front, trying to stuff his short side as Bennett held his post. With it down low, it is sent up top over to Yost. Yost winds up, takes a shot, Bennett the save. The rebound kicked off over to Zach Tracy along the far half boards. Yost getting another shot, went off the ankle of Paulo and goes off into the far corner. Rowan trying to find an exit here. Zach Tracy trying to move it back up to the point. And instead, it'll be slowed up by Schneck, but uh, it'll actually be kept in there. And Schneck can't get it out as it's picked up by Colin Devlin, who does have the tally in this game, the one goal, as it's fed through traffic, and Bennett reaches out with his glove, and oh, there's a puck. Uh, he, he, he actually saw that one through as the shot was taken from the far circle inside the prop zone. Bennett plays uh, something closer to the newer style of goaltending. It's uh, less of the Patrick Wall. You leave the wide open five hole and you snap it down as uh, late as you can, trying to bait the, play, the uh, shooter into going there. Uh, he's down uh, in the butterfly almost immediately, long before it ever gets to him. And it's fed up along the near side, up at the top of the prop zone. It was a long toss on that went deflecting wide. Daniel Durante took, him, it took that shot. As the props have it now, leading it out through center, but it'll be sent right back in by Ben Rafferty behind Bennett. Props are going to have to regroup here with Rogers along the near side, cut up along the left wing, and it's stopped up yet again by Rafferty, who pulls away from Paulus, and he feeds it over to the opposite circle with a shot that just goes wide. Taking that shot was the alternate captain, Matthew Bloom. Ellicott City, Maryland native from down the block, and Rafferty keeping it in along the blue line, and it's finally fished out by Paulus. Hollis feeding along the far wing to Nikolai with a shot on him. Miller, and he makes a save with no rebound coming. And Rowan, their bench is excited about that opportunity as the faceoff will be to the left of Trevor Miller. Well, big credit there goes to Cody Selbert. He managed to stay back and stay in a perfect position to be between all of, he cut off all of the passing lanes between three players rather effectively. Uh, great defense right there. Chance for the props trying to find the puck there, but instead it'll be pulled away by John Luke Durante, setting up along the near side to Joyo. Joyo trying to take a shot. It'll be gloved down by Bennett, who holds on as there's some pressure surrounding his net. If you like the UMBC Retrievers look, look no further than Catch-22 Design. It's Catch-22 Design, the official apparel of the UMBC Retrievers can be found at c22design.com. That's c22design.com. Face off one by the props, kicked off into the near corner inside their own zone as it's Dowdy back there to find it. As it's fed to the front and a shot on. And Bennett will find that one and make yet another save. Almost doubling up the shots on the props. The props are looking for their offensive touch as it has not been lacking thus far. As they are ranked number two in the southeast. The Retrievers at number five, losing to number seven, Liberty U, last night. The score of five to two. Kept in at the far blue line, but it's kicked out by the props. Retrievers trying to find the trying to find the puck to get some zone entry and trying to set up shop again as Jean-Luc Durante is down there shadowing the props player who is I believe that's Dowtry again. And it's up to Bennett. Bennett having to push it out, and this one's gonna be sent down the length of the ice, and it's gonna be an icing against the props as they wait for Nick Yost to get to the hash marks. 17.32 remaining here in the second period of play. UMBC retrievers up 1-0 over the Rowan University Profs. Oh, 
I forgot to tell him to give me an ad plug. But thank you all for tuning in here on crossicefeed.com. You guys are awesome. We are one away from being liked 100 times on Facebook. Like us 100 times over, will ya? It goes down to Trevor Miller in his own zone. And it's Ben Rafferty along the near corner, trying to move it away. And the alternate captain, I believe that is. And it's Tim Larkin for the props. Larkin trying to move it up to the point, and finally it's swept away by Thomas Nairn. And down the length of the ice, and he will get charged with that icing. The face off will come back to the right of Trevor Miller. And I was alluding to, we do have a Facebook page for the Cross Ice Feed broadcasting team. Check us out on Facebook, Cross Ice Feed. Like our page. We have 99 likes right now, and whoever's that 100th like, we're going to read out your name on the air. So uh, we'll if you haven't liked this yet, <laughs> we'll you publicly should. shame you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be associated with us forever. Oh, good. Why would you want that? Face off, one back by the props there. The props trying to control it inside the retriever zone, looking for an offensive setup, but they can't get set up as it's squeezed out in the neutral zone. On the far side over to Eric Mullen. Who cleared all the way down off the side of the net. That one had a funny bounce, actually tickled the twine outside of the net along the near side of the net. And actually went in on the far side. Brandon Fritz having trouble finding the puck, but it'll be picked up by Alec Hannock. Hannock dropping there for Thomas Nairing. Nairing working with Fritz down low. Off in the far corner, Fritz down behind the net. For Nairing, feeding it to the front, trying to find Hannock, but it comes up top to the point to Rafferty. Along the side of the net with a shot that goes wide from Fritz. Goes over to the near point and kept in by Selberg tight at the blue line. All over to Thomas Nairing, who actually got high sticked in the face, and he goes down with an injury. He is hurt after that. And the puck comes up along the side of the net and back behind the cage. And he's trying to make his way gingerly to the bench. Hopefully he is okay. Sean O'Connor moving it back into his own zone, trying to work it through over to the opposite side. Rafferty couldn't receive that pass cleanly as it comes over to Rogers. Rogers sending it down low behind the cage. Trying to pick it up now is Zakowski. Zakowski trying to move it back behind the goal. With a chance now with Paulus. A shot on, but it doesn't go through to Miller. And he's kicked up ahead. Here comes an opportunity. Oh, and that one gets out of the reach of Schenk. Schenk could not handle that pass through. Schenk getting it up to the point. Receives a return pass from Rogers. Off in the far corner it goes. And walking away with it. I believe that is Zach Tracy. Zach Tracy trying to move it out through center. Ben Rafferty's going to have to pick it up. And he's going to come back three on two developing. Rafferty leading the charge inside the prop zone. Rafferty far circle. Looking. Taking a shot. And it gets deflected wide. The rebound going off along the side of the net. And it'll be picked up by O'Connor. O'Connor sending it around the world over to the far near corner. Or the far corner to the near corner. And it was trying to keep it in. But the props will find it. And floated out through center. And then picking it up is Zakowski. Zakowski, far circle, takes his shot and it goes right in on Miller. And Miller holds on with no rebound coming. 15-02 left here in the second. Still one nothing retrievers on the Rowan University props. Well, that was the uh, biggest sustained presence we've seen in either team zone in quite some time. UMBC trying to put the pressure on. Lots of shots sent wide. Rafferty sent that one all the way out to Baker Street. Uh, how about that? We have 101 likes, so we'll get to that in a few seconds oh. here. Yeah, we feel special. We got a winner. Dan Armstrong clearing it all the way in on Bennett. Bennett sending it around the glass over to the near side. And a long toss on from a low percentage shot from the near side boards. And goes right in on Bennett, and he holds on. You know, our 101st uh, like could be uh, the, the Dalmatian. Ha, uh, ha, ha. Well, we'd like to thank uh, Chris Toga Roberts for being our 100th like. He hails from Temple. How about that? All right. And we'll give credit to Jody Miller as well. So thank you for your likes. 101. Thank you all for your support. Here comes along the far side and inside the retriever zone. A hard check there in the neutral zone. Rowan pleased on the outcome of that one. Man, oh man, they are getting into it down to the bench next to me. And a shot right in on Miller and he holds on. Sitting there at the back door was Alec Nikolai waiting for an opportunity as that one was fed right on. The absolute confidence there in Miller. He caught that one and went, yeah, that's right. I did. You, you can just tell with the head bob. Like, yeah, what? Well, the story with Miller is quite interesting here. As, uh, John Drago went down with an injury over the last few weeks, and uh, coach talked to Trevor Miller. Oh, and here's a feet to the front, dangerously bopping through. Goes off into the near corner. Miller was uh, asked to come back, and uh, he came back, and... Uh, Boy, did he work hard to come back as well. It was on short notice, actually, two days before the game against St. Joe's last weekend. Well, that's because he was training with old world technology, moving ox carts, <laughs> while Drago is now uh, getting better using yeah. high technology. Trying to stuff it along the far side of the net. Rowan trying to jam it home, but uh, we got a pile up on 95. 
as there's a lot of traffic there. Well, I mean, all that shows is there's no easy way out. There's no shortcut yeah. home. Exactly. What Too a survivor. <laughs> Well done, sir. I try. The well, face-off will be coming up to the left of Miller as things kind of calm down here. It was a bit rocky before. Oh, my goodness. Was it rocky for? It was, it was rocky for. It was rocky against. I mean, it's, it was tough. <laughs> you, sir, are ridiculous. And now a chance for Alicantic to lead it out of the retriever's zone, feeding it over to Thomas Nearing along the far wing. On the left side, off in the near corner, or far corner, taking it over to the near corner. Still with it, but he gets checked off the puck as uh, sweeping in there to get it. It's Travis Trent. Trent, they need to get through the neutral zone. Along the right, left wing. Rowan moving left to right. Or I beg your pardon, right to left. You're going to be seen moving left to right. you got to hold out those hands and make L's. Your left hand makes an L. Ah, thank you, yeah. sir. <laughs> You're welcome. And it's Brady Kill putting it out in the neutral zone. Rowan's going to find it and clear it right back in. Matt Bloom trying to drop the body down. On Rogers couldn't get the full brunt of that check on, but now Retrievers out of frustration will ice the puck with 13-15 left here in the second period. Still one nothing, Retrievers. A tight game. I was expecting this. I really was. Were you? I was. I mean, looking at the previous scores, I mean, two one in overtime. UMBC defeating them in the regionals to go to the nationals. Four to one UMBC back in December of, of 2011. Five two in November of 2010. 4-4 tie. I mean, it, it's been all UMBC, but it, I mean, the scores aren't that bad, except for maybe a three-goal deficit until you get back to October of 2009 when it's 13-0 UMBC. Those days are long gone, my friend. Rowan has definitely come a long ways. Coach Caulfield doing a fine job behind the bench. And it's fed up through center. Dan Durante couldn't handle that pass. Cleared now, and now it's cleared out. As Rowan will lead it out to the neutral zone along the far wing. Rob Wilworth feeding it down to Miller. Back there to retrieve it. It's Dan Armstrong who clears it out in the neutral zone. Along the red line, Bloom couldn't find it. And it'll be cleared in by Eric Moen. Back along the near side, Colin Devlin sending a cross-size feed. Trying to get it down to Bloom. Bloom trying to get there first. Bennett did get a piece of it, and Bloom also got a piece of Bennett. Now Bloom is paying the price back there as Moen has him tied up. The puck comes back in the retriever zone. Cleared out through the neutral zone, but the Rowan Roth, uh, Roth props will touch it up on and offside with 12-17 to play here in the second period. Well, shots on goal reads 17-12 at 12 in favor of uh, the UMBC Retrievers. I'd say a lot of those are uh, low percentage shots trying to just get something to the cage. But uh, certainly helps to always be on top of that column. Face off at center as it's Cody Selbert that'll get the draw back. Rafferty and Selbert playing a little catch. Goes over to O'Connor, centering pass there for Tracy. Tracy walks in, takes a shot, goes and scores! Your call is very important to us, so please remain on the line. Beautiful, beautiful goal. That's why you have to be extra certain that you close that glove and you close it hard. That's why you don't get the, uh, the frilly stuff. The Roberto Luongo Highway Robbery Grant Fuhr style flash because that puck rolled right up and out of his glove. He didn't close it quick enough and bounced behind him and into the back of the net. And I imagine he's under his own little Eeyore-like cloud right now. Zach Tracy getting the second goal for the Retrievers. Pulling off of Colin Devlin's goal earlier on in this contest. A quick goal at that. Now we got a two-goal lead for the Retrievers and here comes a chance now DJ Fadler gaining speed takes his shot right in on Bennett no rebound coming he was convinced it was loose between the pads and Cody Selbert plays a little wipeout. Uh, he was just doing his max of again off impression. It's a Darius Kasparitis let's go at it Will. <laughs> Kasparitis did it first. Well you're right he <laughs> didn't get up right away therefore it would be the Kasparitis. <laughs> My bad. Oh goodness. And the face-off won by the Retrievers. Looking for another opportunity here. Loose puck trying to fish it free. It was Alec Hanek, but it'll be fed up to the top of the circle. Past Tom Snaring and out. That through by Alec. I believe it was Alecos Paulus that let it in. Into the Retrievers zone. Who let him in? Who let the dogs out is the real question. Who? 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 Ben Rafferty trying to tie up his man in the far corner. It's Shane Brennan. Brennan losing the puck as Thomas Nearing picked his pocket, but it's kept into the blue line by Lowney. Lowney taking out his check on Thomas Nearing, who came up to challenge him. Puck loose along the near circle inside the retriever zone, led out by Fritz. Fritz across the red line, blue line, and in. Trying to move it to the slot, drops it off there for Nearing. Nearing with a shot and a toast save by Brennan. All right, Bennett, I beg your pardon. This one's cleared up along the far half boards and up to the blue line. Not out, kept in there by Rafferty on a second attempt. 
And it comes up to the blue line this time. And it's still not out. Now the props will give it another try and send it down the length of the ice. This one will come back in icing as Cody Selberg gets there first. 10.59 left here in the second period. Two nothing dogs. Well, we mentioned Darius Kasparitis and considering our proximity to the uh, Rowan bench, I imagine they hurt us and took it to heart. Not, one, not, not once, not twice, but thrice on that shift. They went for the man and not the puck. And that's why they had such a difficult time in the UMBC zone. Couldn't get anything going because they're going for the man, hit, going for the hit, and not for the biscuit. Well, if you can combine hitting and speed out there and finesse, I mean, if you have a couple of checking guys out there with a short and speedy guy, I guess it could work in your favor, as I was indicating earlier in the Potomac Patriots game, but definitely did not work in their favor, that's for sure. Rowan Props clearing it right in on Miller. Miller is going to glove it out and set it up there for, I believe that is number 17. Yes, it is. Uh, Matt Kelly. And Matt Kelly trying to work through it. Oh, and a chance there to stuff it home as J.C. Caulfield was waiting for it. It found its way through traffic in front of the net, but Matt Bloom's going to take it the other way inside of the prop zone. Along the near side, trying to scoop it up to the front of the net, but it's deflected through back behind the cage along the half boards far side. And retrievers and props working at it now in the prop zone. Rogers will walk away with it. And he stops and turns. It goes back in the same direction he came. Slowed up there by Dan Durante. And he'll find it again and give it another go. Logan. Trying to clear it out. Logan Rogers. But here comes a point shot, and it just gets steered aside by Bennett. Rebound picked up along the far side boards. Dan Armstrong putting it into a pile there. And he's going to go in there to support to move it along. I don't know who that is. It's, his number's covered up because he's getting bear hugged. Yeah, that was uh, Dan Durante. But it comes over to the near side. Jean-Luc Durante with it. Setting it up top to the point. Working with it is Travis Joyal trying to set it down over to that same corner where he had a few friendlies waiting for it. Friendlies, I love that place. It's a great place, ain't it? Nick Yost centering pass up into the front, looking for a backdoor stuff along the far side. And he couldn't get the pass to Joyle, so the Rowan props are going to come back the other way. Here comes a shot along the side of the net. The save by Miller off of a Larkin shot. And another save there. And the rebound will go over to Travis Joyle. Joyle centering it up through, trying to find Jared Padgett, but that pass was out of his reach. Props will clear it in, go off on some changes, then tag up on a delayed offside. 9-10 to play here in the second. Two nothing dogs. And cleared up into the retriever's zone. Doesn't go very far as Nick Yost picked up along the far side. He's chipped back in. Devlin will pick it up at the high slot along the near side and putting it through center past everybody. And this one will come back in icing. Rarely is the word calm, cool, and collected, or the phrase, applied to goaltenders. I have met many, many, many goaltenders. Most of them are somewhere between uh, twitchy and tweaky. Uh, and, and I mean that lovingly because well, I'm, I'm sure a couple of my goaltenders are listening now. <laughs> um, but this, uh, this Miller is just absolutely incredible. It seems every save, every situation, no matter how perilous, he is just cool as ice out there. Like, like the Shakutuki Cucumber himself, George Vesna. There you go. As this one's cleared all the way down to the re Rowan Prof zone. Prof's leading it out along the near wing. Fed ahead to Monix. Monix trying to clear it in deep. And touching that puck was Zach Tracy, and he paid the price. You break it, you buy it. <laughs> it goes over to Devlin. Devlin feeding along the far wing. And Tracy trying to feed it through his feet to escape, but he couldn't get that successfully through as Devlin's working along the red line. And up inside the prop zone, someone lost a mouth guard. I hope they have dental insurance. And it will be the props that will feed it up through center. Zach Tracy gloving it down, playing it to himself as it goes over to O'Connor off the pass. O'Connor ducking back into his own zone, leaving it there for Brady Keel, trying to set up the pass along the wing, but the props... It looks like we have an injured prop player. It's Rob Wilworth trying to get off the ice as he's nursing a hand injury. And coming across the line, Schenck taking his shot. And uh, I do question whether or not that was offside. He, he came hopping off the, uh, the bench there, but Schenck a little early. A hard check here. DJ Fadler getting crunched into the boards. The change being called by Rowan. Now walking it down tree with a shot and a save by the glove of Miller. It's seared off into the far corner. Devlin trying to work it through, but he has his pocket pick to follow there. And getting bumped around a little bit. And Props trying to set up shop here on some offense here as they're down by two. And the hits are coming up high. DJ Fadler getting shoved around by the co-captain, Paulos. He goes over to the far corner and over to the near side and out into the neutral zone as the retriever successfully clear. DJ Fadler trying to find the puck, but he couldn't get it around. It downed Eric Moen, who was down on the ice. I beg your pardon, that was not Moen. That was actually Lowney, but regardless, Paulos setting it up top to the point with a point shot on. He redirected through some traffic and it steered off into the near corner as a shot taken by Schenk went wide. Up top to the blue line. Schickner taking a shot, pet saved by Miller. 
And now we're going to have a call. And it looks like a holding call. Not sure who's getting, well, it's going to go against their own props, judging by that reaction. So it's Zach Kowski. Looks like Colin Devlin. Thought he was going to get tagged with that one. Oh, he will get tagged with that one. Zakowski looked like he was upset, like he was going to get the call against. Well, I think he was just upset that he was held and he was just vindicated. Again, I go back to Miller. I mean, whereas we saw just last night, uh, what Maple Leafs goaltender was that who was saying some colorful Gustafson, things? Yeah. yeah, Jonas Gustafson saying some colorful things oh, after wait, various he's a plays. Now. Sorry. <laughs> when did that happen? Uh, it happened during the off season. Oh, that's why. Which is still happening. Right, that's why, hence why I'm not up to date. Short Meanwhile, <laughs> Miller, Here comes still call. Chance. What? Miller still call. Yeah, good call. I was finishing my thought in between your play-by-plays. Well, okay. Hilton Garden in penalty kill here. And now the Retrievers trying to send it down to like the ice. Ben Rafferty with it now. Rafferty looking. Here comes a home run pass for Sean O'Connor, but caught out of the middle of the air as Travis Trent found it. Trent with it along the near side. Over to Caulfield, back over to Trent. Trent leading the charge across the blue line. Trying to take a shot. Losing his stick in the process was Cody Selbert, but that kind of worked in his favor. Selbert, uh, uh, wow, what a good hit up high. Usually that doesn't work too well, but Travis Trent went down like a ton of bricks. Yeah. He was clearly watching the puck and not keeping his head up, and he went right down on his dopa. Minute yeah. 25 remains here <laughs> on the power play. That was a Polish treat, folks. <laughs> Polish treat. <laughs> that is Dupa. Would you prefer the German Popo? No, let's leave it be. Up top to the props. Up at the blue line with a shot taken by Larkin that just got steered aside by Miller. Right up to the blue line, not out. Kept in again by Larkin. Over to the far side, over to Nikolai. Nikolai to the front. Saved by Miller. It's loose. It'll be picked up by Rafferty. Rafferty getting sticked around a little bit there. But it'll be the props that'll still maintain control with Lowney. Lowney along the near side blue line. Over to the near circle to Nikolai. Back up top to Lowney. Lowney tees it up, takes a shot, does not make its way through. The dog's in the way. And a hard check there along the near side. And trying to get it out was Alec Hannock. Hannock could not get it out. That's kept active. J.C. Caulfield trying to find it, but he's going to back off and let the rest of the guys go in and do it as Travis Trent goes down there to chase, but instead it'll be picked up by Zach Tracy and all the way down to Bennett. 40 seconds left on the Colin Devlin penalty. And coming across the line is Moen. Moen gaining speed along the near circle. Curling That's around off. the net, and the net is knocked off by Miller, who backed into it, and so we'll have a stoppage of play. Okay, I think... Uh, I, well, I'm glad we got that. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, uh, I wasn't sure until he screamed that at us. Gotcha, Stripes. All right, 28 seconds left on Devlin's penalty. And 517 left here in the second period. Two-nothing dogs. You know, I do love the, uh, the nicknames of colleges at this level. Some really creative ones. If you had to make a 24-7 uh, you know, for the UMBC Retrievers, I think it would have to be Retrievers Unleashed. There you go. I'll keep that in mind when I do my documentary. Weird bounce off the partition as it goes up to the front and picked up by Rowan. Off that shot that went off the partition as it'll be Zach Tracy that'll find it and send it down the length of the ice. So it looks like both teams will go 0 for 1 on their respective power plays. And now gaining speed. Lekos Paulus. Paulus. Up in the far corner, feeding it to the front. Nobody there to pick it up. They try to find Paulo. Paulo Ooh. having a little trouble there. I guess he took down Dan Armstrong, but no call. Armstrong is struggling to get up. No, Armstrong's going to bear with it, and he's going to truck on here. As he tries to set up a pass for Dan Durante through the neutral zone. He does get it to him. Durante coming in. Far circle. Takes a shot, and Bennett makes a save. Now we got some pushing and shoving going on as Bennett's comfort zone has been violated. Again, that katana comes out. I know we're up to the hilt on sword jokes, but... You're ridiculous. I can't take you anywhere. <laughs> That's what you do when you when, when I am in a dangerous situation and I feel my life is in jeopardy. I make jokes. I see that. Yeah. Stop shaking the scaffold. I don't wanna. <laughs> Face off one back by the profs. Sent over to the near side, over to Caulfield with a centering pass out in the neutral zone for Trent. Trent trying to move it ahead there. Trying to get it to Caulfield. Caulfield trying to move it deep, but it'll be Trent that'll give it another go along the near side. On his backhand with a shot that goes wide. Caulfield will pick up along the far half boards. Backhands it back deep behind the goal line to Larkin. Larkin back behind Miller. Trying to stuff it home on a wraparound. The rebound comes up top to the shoulder. What a great save by Miller. Oh my goodness. How did he stop that on three attempts there? And another chance here. No, it's going to squeeze between both defenders at the top of the blue line. And it'll go out in the neutral zone. Props back there to retreat. We're back to five aside hockey. And Caulfield is going to get caught here as uh, the teams were just the 
a bit of a hectic, hectic activity up here. They'll be, they'll be called on the offside. 3.45 left here in the second period. 2 nothing dogs. Man, what a great back and forth contest. Absolutely. And I, I'm still, I'm enamored that Trevor Miller is just that calm. Being in the, in the position we are, you can see right down into his, into his mask. Just continuous calm. There was no sense of you have to rush to make that save. You just went, yep, oh, I, know, I got this. Don't worry. He hasn't closed his eyes yet, has he? No, not at <laughs> once. He doesn't blink in that. Oh, and a hard check there, taking care of business. Brady Kill getting the worst end of that one. Here comes a chance now for Rowan, trying to feed it to the front. Monix takes a shot, goes wide. Backhand shot, what a great diving effort by Brady Kill. Oh, Kiel almost got caught with a high stick there, but Kiel's going to walk away with the puck. He gets tripped up, and he will draw the call. Going to the box will be Patrick Monix. As the shot taken goes wide to Bennett, and it will be picked up along the near side boards. As coming out for the extra man was Bloom, and he got run into. And it will be Monix that will sit for two on the trip. Brady Kiel doing a fine job at drawing that one. I think he sold it well. Well, yeah, a little bit. And it, it was the retribution is what happened. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times you mention it to hockey players. They all know this. If, you're no, if you don't get a call going your way, you don't retaliate right. because the referee will get it. And that's exactly what happened there. Blue must be a really nice guy because immediately, I think he apologized to that player that tapped on the bucket and said, no, it's okay, really, I'm sorry. Actually, I think my wife Wendy knows their family. Uh, she's from Ellicott City as well, so I believe she went to high school with, their, uh, with his older brothers. Comes over to the near side, back inside the retriever zone. Green Territory power play. The, the, the visit then at two Restaurant Park Drive and Owings Mills. Here comes a chance now. Bloom with the shot. They score! Thank you. Come again. Three nothing dogs on a Green Turtle power play goal. That was just a fluky shot right from the far side of the ice. The rebound came straight across the crease. And for whatever reason, the OMBC player was there just standing going, oh. Well, I'll, I'll take care of this. I just popped into the back of the net. No effort given. Beautiful play. Worked out beautificently. Who was that masked man? We'll get the call from public address. Jeff Hemmel. Let's hear what he has to say. Hal will wait in a second here. As now Rowan has an opportunity feeding it to the front. Along the far side. Comes up top to the point. Winding up taking a shot. That was Morielli. And here comes a chance now for Sean O'Connor. O'Connor. Coming across the line into the prop zone, feeding it with a shot and a great pad save by Bennett. Oh, baby, he stoned him. That was T.J. Fadler on the one time. So there you go. Yost and Bloom on the assist for the Sean O'Connor goal. 2-10 left here in the second. Three nothing dogs. And now it's up through center. And Rowan Props coming in with Paulo. Paulo taking a shot, getting tripped up, and it appears that Rafferty's going to get caught for that. Rafferty is not pleased with that call. Neither is the ref. I don't think I've seen someone that animated. 23 to 22 is the shot totals. Leading that category is UMBC. We're going on the Hilton Garden Inn penalty kill. Coach Vogelai is giving him a talking to. I guess that's the advantage of having the penalty box right next to the bench and no glass between the two. Face off one by the props up top with the blue line. Taking a shot and deflected through. And that shot was from Tim Larkin and Yost deflected it through. Along the half boards far side. Rowan trying to find it. Nick Yost will find it. And he'll peel away with it. Back behind his cage and all the way around the glass. Not out. Kept in up top by Lowney. Lowney stepping into a shot. Too much traffic in front. And Yost will clear it out on his backhand. All the way up to the row and blue line. It'll be picked up by Larkin. Over to the near side, over to Paulus, but Paulus loses it. Sean O'Connor feeding it back to Yost. Yost trying to clear it down the length of the ice, but it'll be picked up by Paulo. Paulo dropping it there for Paulus. Paulus will have to chase it over to the far boards. He'll stop it up along the far blue line, and along the half boards, he'll send a pass down. Back up top, over to the near side with a shot that goes through the traffic. Good wraparound shot, they score! Alekos Paulus. Gets a power play goal for Rowan, and there goes the shutout as they nab a power play goal with 1.10 left here in the second period. You know, that's an unfortunate series of events right there. Nicholas Yos was in front. It got stopped on his skate. It never did get through to Miller and that. Got stopped on the skate, and the puck just sat there. And then, of course, the Rowan player right there to pick it up, reposition it, and go around Miller for the goal. Uh, just unfortunate. There's nothing you can do about that. 
There's no way you can anticipate that. Uh, just it, it, Sometimes the brakes beat the boys, that's all. And he spun like a top to get that goal. And you get the public address on this one as it goes back into the retriever's zone with one minute to play here in the second period. Three to one dog, still holding on to that lead. Alec Hanek winds up, takes a shot. Thomas Neering with a shot, it just misses the glass above Bennett. Coach Vogelai is hopping around in there on the bench. Here comes a shot. Okay, I'm trying to see if he got the right goal on that one, but we'll catch the information in the intermission with 35 seconds to play. Rowan controlling the play. Here comes a backhand try taken by Larkin, but it goes wide. Larkin chasing that rebound off in the near corner. He tackles his man, and it's Cody Selbert. Larkin looking for an opportunity here as he sends it over into the far corner, but Ben Rafferty is there to receive it. Over to Thomas Nearing, two on two coming back the other way, but it'll be two on three. And now a chance, Alec Hanek looking for one here. But it'll be cleared out in the neutral zone with 15 seconds left. Cody Selber launches this one into the prop zone. Gloved down by the props. And that is Moen. We'll send it up through center. And it'll be played with a high stick. And we'll have a faceoff coming up down in the Rowan zone with 6.3 seconds to go here in the second period. Well, this one has certainly been a lot more lively than the last period. Uh, both teams have had a lot of time down low now. Uh, not quite as much as you might expect for these two powerhouses of ACHA Division II but uh, certainly has made much more uh, inroads into enemy territory. Matt Bloom will take the face off, and he'll win it back with a shot. The save by Bennett. The rebound kicks up top. Yost winds up, takes a shot, and it gets deflected by the props over to the half boards near side, and that'll do it for the second period. After 40 minutes of play, the Retrievers have a 3-1 to one lead. So we'll take it into an intermission break here. As the shots are all even at 24, but the score is still in the favor of UMBC. Stay tuned. It's Retrievers Hockey here on Cross Ice Feed. Welcome back, everybody, to the Reisterstown Sportsplex in Reisterstown, Maryland. I'm David Stearns. Join with me is John Baranowski getting ready for some third period action. University of Maryland, Baltimore County Retrievers are up 3-1 to one on the Rowan University Paroffs who are ranked at number two, Retrievers ranked at number five. This undoubtedly, if it concludes in the favor of UMBC, will look favorable on them for the conclusion of this ranking period, which ends at the end of this month. And they will see these Rowan Prof back here in the same building, December 8th. So mark your calendars for that game. So you're telling me that if they win, it's a good thing. But if they that's, lose, that's, that's earth shattering, Dave. That's, I know. Thank how you. did you come up with such insight? You're supposed to say thank you, Captain Obvious. John Madden couldn't come up with such insight. Uh, well, uh, you see here, John, uh, if they win. Because uh, most of it will be about Brett Favre. <laughs> Brett Favre. <laughs> uh, boom, Brett Favre. <laughs> all right, so Rowan University ready to roll here. They're getting all pumped up and looking to redeem themselves here to tie this one up at three. But it's 3-1, dogs. Third period faceoff, both teams getting pumped. And Zach Tracy wins that faceoff, and Sean O'Connor helps on it as it goes back to Colin Devlin, playing a little catch there with Yost. Back over to Devlin. Over to Sean O'Connor, who does not deflect this one in, and they're going to rule it in icing with nine seconds into this one. We're going to go all the way back into Retriever's territory for a faceoff to the left of Trevor Miller. Quick shout out to uh, my past broadcasting crew, Ryan Cherry, Seth Pizar, listening in. One of the many, many people listening to our broadcast right now. Thank oh, you, everybody, who is uh, here and listening. And great stuff. I was listening. We were listening to some stuff this uh, this afternoon. They took on uh, the Minnesota Aces. That was the uh, Rhea Aces? I saw it on Facebook. Oh, okay. Not who we thought it was. This is Junior A team, though. Oh, okay. Well, all the credit to them is they sounded like they had a solid game. 5-2 victory for the Mercer's Lakers. Anyways, right. there's a hockey game here. Exactly. Zach Tracy feeding it up into the slot. Here comes the chance. DJ Fandler trying to find it through as it was in the middle of the air and bobbling its way towards the goal line, but Bennett found it just in time. Mercyhurst, of course, won last night 5-2 against the West Virginia U Mountaineers. Just a little plug there. And also, we should probably mention, too, that uh, Miami University won 3-1 last night against the Grand Valley State University Lakers. On the far side, UMBC trying to put it in deep, but the props are going to find it and send it down the length of the ice over with Nikolai. Nikolai could not follow up his dump in there as it was picked up by the Retrievers. And another attempt 
by Eric Moen. Sends it deep inside Retrievers territory. Retrievers will find it and lead it out. Dan Durante trying to set it up through center, but it's picked off by Alex or Alecos Paulus, I beg your pardon. Comes over to the near side. It'll be cleared out by Dan Armstrong. Along the left wing, over to Bloom. Bloom, top of the slot. Looks, makes a shot, and it goes into the glass. The rebound will be picked up by Dan Durante and a backhand pass. Nobody there to receive it. And it'll be the props that'll put it high into the air into the neutral zone. It'll be picked up by Shane Brennan for the second, but it'll be the Retrievers that'll pick it up as the loose change finds its way over to the props' blue line. And Bloom will finally wrangle it down, sending it over to the far side. It'll be chipped in by Ben Rafferty. Over to the near side corner, over to the far side corner. It'll be Logan Rogers with it. Rogers feeding it up along the boards and out. It'll be picked up by Jean-Luc Durante. It goes all the way back to Cody Selbert, who will settle things down and bring it over to the near side. Cleared up through the neutral zone, picked up by the props. Goes over to Doucher. Doucher. Doucher putting it in. Into the retriever zone. Cody Selbert will find it, putting it up along the near side. Not out. A long toss by Morielli. Goes wide. Along Far side boards, Dowertree trying to put it down low. Dowerty trying to work things up from the blue line far side. He's very fast and uh, aggressive. He's a good two-way player from what I saw. He's a puck-moving defenseman, if you will, maybe in the essence of a Brian Campbell. Doesn't every defenseman move the puck? Well, you know, aggressively <laughs> and an offensive two-way kind of thing. Not a stay-at-home defense, but he's definitely not a stay-at-home type of guy. Yeah. Well, he spends plenty of time at home and has a very nice family, I'm sure. <laughs> J.C. Caulfield tried to get a hold of it, but it's cleared all the way down to Brian Bennett. Bennett will set it up there and drop it off for Morielli. Matthew Morielli, the Howell, New Jersey native. Trying to clear it out. It's kept in by Sean O'Connor. O'Connor with a backhand pass. Doesn't go to anybody. It's Tim Larkin, the Williamstown, New Jersey native. And it'll be turned over to the dogs as it's Colin Devlin to get back to Yost along the far side boards. Couldn't hook up there with Zach Tracy as the props will come in with Dougherty. Dougherty trying to take his shot through, but he gets taken out in the process. And a nice hip check there. Nick Yost getting taken out of the play by Trent. They'll come out of the neutral zone. Dougherty with it now. Dougherty looking along the far side glass, trying to move it ahead for Pyatt. Pyatt could not find the puck into his wheelhouse there, but the props will carry on and put it along the near side boards. Clearing attempt by the Retrievers is foiled as it's kept in by Schickner. Schickner trying to take his shot through. Miller does make the save as he steers it off to the side. Along the half side or half boards near side, Sean O'Connor tried to clear it out. And a point shot is foiled by Moen. And oh, Moen hauls down his guy. We're going to have a call there. And Sean O'Connor got taken out with a high stick. Yeah, that stick came up and uh, knocked him right down. That hurt. There's not that much padding involved with that cage, uh, especially along that chin line. They can still cut you. I've seen it happen. I've actually seen someone get their nose broken with the cage on. Yeah. Tell ya, Wazalewski. Dan Wazalewski a couple years ago got smacked right into the boards, uh, hit right the top of the dasher, and the cage itself crushed. Yeah. So Lowney is going to sit for two on interference, as the call. So we go on the Green Turtle power play. If I'm not mistaken, they're one for three so far in this game. I believe you're right. Goes over to the far side. Yost keeping it inside the prop zone. Trying to get it down to Dan Durante. Losing his footing back there. I can't see who that was. That was actually Eric Moen that took a spill. Dan Durante trying to feed it to the front. And it was loose there for a second for Thomas Nuring to pop home. But it comes up top to Yost. Over to the far corner. Over to Dan Durante. Dan Durante with it. Up top to Yost. Yost looking for an open lane. Sends it over to the near side to Bloom with a shot. Pat saved by Bennett. Plenty of traffic up there. Thomas Nuring screening him. And he's going uncontested there as Eric Moen is just standing there waiting. Make his move on Thomas Nairn. It'll be Dan Durante playing catch with Bloom, and we're going to have a crease call. And the face off will come outside of the neutral zone. Man in the crease. Emphatically called by the referee. Man in the crease, face off outside. Give him credit for that. I wonder if this referee is a police officer in his, in his regular time. You know, he's got a very uh, authoritative voice. I wouldn't argue with him. I know. 15:39 left here in the third period. 3-1 dogs. They're on the Green Turtle Power Play. Visit them at 2 Restaurant Park Drive in Owings Mills, Maryland. And if you're in attendance in any of the Retrievers games, they do have a $5 off any entree special for those who are in attendance. Offer expires December 31st, 2012. Over to the near side, across the line. Zach Tracy wants up. Scores! Oh, the huge manatee! Zach what? Tracy! Oh, baby, what a laser shot! 
What a beautiful shot coming down along the near side again from up high. You put a top shelf glove side. That's the second one that's gotten by the goaltender, and it's worked out well. 4-1 your score in favor of the UMBC Retrievers. This game is going to the dogs, and I mean that in a good way. I like it. I like it, sir. Well said, Zach Tracy. That'll be, uh, yeah, that, that, is that his first goal in this game? Yes. I believe so. So we'll get the PA call from Jeff Himmelt in just a few moments. And now coming across the line is Brandon Fritz, two on one. Fritz comes in, takes a shot, and a blocker saved by Bennett as this one goes out of play. Well, that's the closest puck to us so far <laughs> in our death trap of scaffolding that we're currently on. It's only a matter of time, Johnny. Only a matter of time. I want to demonstrate uh, just how unsturdy this is. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Stop shaking. Face off one back by the props and out in the neutral zone. And a nice check there by Nikolai. We're waiting on the public address here. A lot of scratchings on the score sheet, I can see. 15 minutes to go here in the third period. 4 1 dogs. And it's the profs with it now. Dowtry. Dowtry is moving up through the center to Morielli. <laughs> Miller. Trevor Miller getting an assist on that one as well with Rafferty. So there you go. That is your call. Rafferty and Miller. To Tracy, who gets the fourth goal in this contest. Thomas Nearing across the line. He gets stepped up there by Morielli. And it'll be Nikolai working his way along the blue line and out of the neutral zone. The backhand clear in. All the way down to the retriever's end. 14-14 to go here in the third period. Rowan with their backs up against the wall here. Have three goals to catch up on. Last time they had a 4-4 score in a contest between these two teams was the Winter Classic. The New Jersey Pond Hockey Classic, I beg your pardon there, as I correct myself. And it's a two on two the other way. Bloom with the drop pass to Dan Durante. Here comes the chance now. It's loose up front. Oh, and almost an opportunity there for Dan Armstrong. The net is knocked off, but plays going the other way. They're going to readjust the net as coming back the other way is Zakowski. Zakowski looking for a place to shoot that puck, and it goes well wide. And that was not the intended spot that he wanted to put it. They have to tag up on the offsides as Nick Yost wrangles that puck behind his net. He clears it over to the near side with Dan Durante. Out of the reach of Dan Armstrong. He'll go off on a change. This one does not make it far enough for icing as it slows up in the near circle inside the prop zone. Working his way with it is Christopher Lowney, the Medford, New Jersey native. All players on this team except for one are from New Jersey. And comes over to the near side over to Lowney. Lowney trying to move it away from Jean-Luc Durante. I'm guessing that one person from out of state is the one who pumps gas. It's Nicholas, not legal to yeah. pump your own gas in New Jersey. Good call. Nicholas Dow is the only non-New Jersey native on this roster. Fed to the front and a chance there for Trent, but he couldn't find it. Backhanded through as 12.50 remains in this third period. This one's going to come back and icing against the Retrievers. We like to remind everybody, if you like the sweatshirts or hats or anything cool, go to Catch-22 Design to order your dog's gear. It's C22design.com. Now, when you say your dog's gear, do you mean gear for your dog? No, no, no. For you, if you like the dog. Oh, okay. The retriever. Do they have gear. dog sweaters? I think I can get a dog oh sweater. Oh, my goodness. Just go to c22design.com. Oh, boy. It looks like uh, Eric Moen <laughs> dropped a nice check there, and Rowan Bench did a little stick tapping to, you know, honor that. Here comes a chance now. Fed to the front. Nobody there to bank at home. It's Tim Larkin. Fed that one through. It'll be the dogs coming back the other way with it. And it will be Jared Padgett who gets knocked onto his dupa along the hash mark far side. Cracked up along the boards and Rowan will walk away with it. Co-captain J.C. Caulfield setting up a pass there for Tim Larkin. Larkin, far circle, takes a shot and Miller made the save. He steered that one aside, backhand feed to the front, does not make it through. But it comes all the way to the top now. And trying to tee up the shot is Morielli, but Morielli has to put it along the near side boards and deep. 12 minutes to go here in the third period. 4-1 dogs. David Stearns with John Baranowski, your Cross Ice Feed broadcasting team. Check us out at crossicefeed.com if you're not already here. And it's Trent. Taking it far side for the props inside the retriever zone with the drop pass. Leaving it there for Schickner. Miller has to make the save on that one as it goes off along the half boards near side. And props losing control of it and coming back the other way, gaining some speed. That is Jean-Luc Durante. But he couldn't get there in time as it was taken away by Andrew Dartry. Dougherty with it now. 
Dougherty, and the pass over to Taylor Pyatt. 24, we still don't know who he is for Rowan. Questions need answered, but uh, at this point, uh, it's kind of a moot point. Hey, you still have an answer to who is called the profs whenever they have a student faculty game. Hey, I don't know everything. Come on now. Comes over to the near side. Sean O'Connor trying to chase this one down. Miss Milani, that's going to get it first. That puck lit, went right in front of my face and out in the neutral zone. Pyatt trying to move it along the near side boards, trying to move it ahead over to Will Her uh, Willworth, but he's going off on a chain. Along the far boards, in the far corner, Lowney trying to find his way through all the retrievers that were nipping at his heels. And it'll be the Roman Prof still controlling it, as it'll be Nikolai sending it deep inside the retriever zone, but it'll be Nick Yost who logs the most ice time on this team. <laughs> Yost for the most. Yost for the most, yes indeed. And he's Captain Yost, the endeared captain by all, and people love him. He is a great leader on this team, that's for sure. Alekos Paulus, who does have the goal for the Rowan Props, if I'm not mistaken. Goes over to the far side boards of the Retriever's zone. Nick Yost taking care of business as he takes down his check and Shane Brennan. He's sent down deep into the Retriever's zone. Daniel Durante going after it. Dan doing some work down low, leaving it there for Sean O'Connor. O'Connor putting it over to the far corner. Over to, I believe that is number 17. There's Matt Kelly. Fed up through the neutral zone and nobody there to pick it up. But the props will retrieve it back in their own zone with Brennan. Brennan along the near side. And a little tic-tac-toe passing with Nikolai over to Paula. I think the pregnant is Paula's. Regardless, play carries on. Moen playing catch with Dougherty. Dougherty coming across the line, takes a shot. Too many retrievers in the way of that one. And the retrievers will strip it away and take it back the other way with Dan Armstrong along the left wing. Feeding it up to Bloom. Bloom couldn't get a hold of it. He'll pick it up behind the net, trying to stick it up to the front. Brian Bennett making a save a couple of times there. And he's back behind the goal. Armstrong trying to give it back to Bloom, but it goes over to the near side. And oh, and a hard check there. Touching the puck just for a second was Eric Schenk, and he'll pay the price. And this one's going to go past everybody, and the dogs are going to get charged with an icing with 9-10 to play here in the third period. 4-1 to one retrievers. A three-goal commanding lead. I call it commanding. You may not, but I think it's a solid lead. More solid than this scaffolding, I will tell you that. That's for sure. But uh, it's impressive. UMBC has not called off the dogs at all. They have been right at nipping at the heels the entire time. The uh, pressure is very regular. It has not changed a bit as this game has gone on. Pressure makes diamonds, as you say. Or as George Patton said. Uh, that's a quote from George Patton. There you go. And Lowney bringing it down to the far corner inside the retriever zone. Trying to work it through. And it's Tim Larkin trying to find his bearings, but it will be picked up by Armstrong. Armstrong trying to move it out. He almost gets knocked onto his keister. It'll be picked up and sent away. Colin Devlin, who got the first goal in this game, the first one for the Retrievers, takes it across the line, and he gingerly taps it into the far corner. And it'll be Dan Durante down there to chase. He's getting no support whatsoever. He's taking on the entire props team. Now he'll get somebody trailing into the slot. Brandon Fritz, some changes that we're finishing up. J.C. Caulfield putting it through center, picked up by Ben Rafferty. Rafferty trying to put it deep in the prop zone. And in the way of that one was Morielli. Here comes a chance now. Brandon Fritz comes in, takes a shot. Bennett the save. No rebound. He'll glove that one down and get a faceoff to his left with 8.13 to play here in the third. Well, the next game uh, at home for the UMBC Retrievers, Saturday, November 17th at 4.30 p.m. Georgetown University is in the building. And you'll catch that one here on crossicefeed.com if you can't be there. And you can find more information at umbcicehockey.com. And, of course, the following night they will take on the William Patterson University Pioneers. Plenty of hockey action to finish out before the Thanksgiving break, so come on out to the rink here at the Righteous Town Sportsplex or tune in to crossicefeed.com. A feed to the front does not make its way through, and the props will find it. J.C. Caulfield with the nail. Caulfield yeah, locking this one down past Miller. Down there to Chase. A little dump of Chase going on here. The hard check by Peter McDonald goes right into Cody Silver. McDonald looking to plant himself up front as it comes up top to the point to Rogers. Rogers trying to put it through all that traffic and it gets steered off into the near corner. Selber trying to put it up along the half boards. Looks like uh, Peter McDonald is their uh, enforcer-like player. He's just hit a few bodies around and that's about it. He's off the ice already. Trent taking it across the retriever line. Seven and a half to go here in the third. Feeding it on his backhand to the front. Nobody there to pick it up. It'll be Rogers putting it in deep into a pile of bodies in the corner. It'll be the props that walk away victorious with it. 
And it is Wilworth with it. Over to the near side, blue line, fanning on his shot with Rogers and the Retrievers. It'll be Thomas Nearing taking advantage of that. Ducking out a hip check, and it almost looked like he was about to break his stick. There was a lot of torque on that one as he was going down, but he'll go off and change as he clears that in to the prop zone. Darity moving along the far side boards. And being tripped up there with no call. That was Sean O'Connor getting taken out of the play. Goes over to Rogers back in his own zone, up along the right wing. Picked up by Monix. Monix going across the line. Nobody there to work with him, so but he'll find the puck as the Retrievers couldn't handle it. Monix trying to move it along the half boards. Lowney, Lowney in there to support as well. Lowney pinching it down low. Pye walking away. Feeding it to the front with a backdoor try, but it was Nikolai that couldn't get a handle on it. Up top, Darty with a shot. A rebound off of a Trevor Miller save. Goes up top to the blue line and out. Fighting off the hold with Sean O'Connor. O'Connor across the line, two on one. Comes and takes a shot and a save by Bennett. And a good glove save at best there with 6 20 to go here in the third period. 4 1 dogs. And it's Zach Tracy trying to work down low. Lowney has it caught up in his skate. Sean O'Connor in there to pop it free. Tracy looking for an open man. Gives it over to Kelly. Kelly couldn't get the shot through. Through traffic. A nice shot by Fandler. But Bennett finds it and holds on. 6 8 remains here in the third period. David Stearns, John Baranowski, your Cross Ice Feed broadcasting crew. Like us on Facebook. Look us up at our page, Cross Ice Feed. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we do. Bennett again, uh, not so, so sure on the glove. He bobbled that puck again, and that actually led to a goal earlier in this contest. Gotta have to watch that. Yep. It's deflected up to the blue line and out along the near side, being crunched Ooh. out of the play. Nice hit there. Brady Kill taking out Nikolai into the stanchion there by the penalty box door. I'll give you another George Patton quote. May God have mercy on my enemies, because I won't. Dan Armstrong feeding it to the front with a light lofting shot on goal. And Matt Bloom's going to put his stick in on the action. And he'll have hell to pay as Bennett is a little bit aggravated on that one as it got sticked in the glove. We can say hell? This is my broadcast production. Oh, wow. Don't, 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 go, uh, <laughs> don't go revealing my secret now. I'll have people in interviews I've never cussing. said that on the air before. I feel dirty. Now the FCC isn't regulating the Internet now, are they? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> 547 remains here in the third. 4-1, your score in favor of the Retrievers. Well, remember, say no at the SOPA. Oh, and a broken stick for Matt Bloom, and he's upset about that one. That's $300 I just heard snapping right in half and going up in flames. It caught fire? It did. My God. Fire on ice. And five and a half to go here in the third period. Props looking to get some offensive activity going on here as time is running out on them. They're currently ranked at number two. Retrievers ranked at number five. This one's going to look good in their book, that's for sure. Even though they lost to number seven, Liberty U, last night, five to two. And the puck being held up behind the cage by Eric Moen. Moen setting up shop, looking for an outlet pass here. Sends it up ahead for Zach Kowski. Up along the left wing and into the retriever zone. No ice and Cody Selbert back there to get in the far boards. He'll get checked off the puck as he releases it over to the near side of Travis Joyo. Joyo putting it out into the neutral zone. And picking up there is Dowdy. Dowdy putting it deep in the far corner of the retriever zone. The retrievers will clear it out. Looking for that bounce pass to Travis Joyo off the boards here was... Colin Devlin. Devlin's got a goal in this game. He's looking through center. Four pass up to Travis Show. He'll finally hook up with him. Top of the slot. Looking for an option. Takes a shot through traffic and just goes wide. Trying to get in there to aggravate Bennett was John Luke Durante. That broken stick is still uh, causing some problems there on the ice as it's shoved off to the sideboards. Now an open opportunity here for Larkin. Larkin looking for an open lane. Larkin comes and takes a shot and it'll end up on the 17th green. So stoppage of play is that one hit the protective netting with 4.16 to go here in the third period. 4-1 to one score in favor of your UNBC Retrievers. And the Retrievers still lead on the score tally. It was tied up at the end of the second period. Now stands 34-28 to 28 in favor of UNBC. Plenty of shots in this one. A lot of low percentage shots though. Yeah, lots of stuff from up top from the outside. Uh, the scoring opportunities are much smaller figures. Thomas Naring along the right wing clears it in. Gets a check hard up there at the blue line, but he's fine. But then uh, we're going to have a whistle stopping here. Yeah, that yes. goaltender touched the puck first. That should not have been an icing call. Well, I don't think it was an icing call. It was just he was holding on to it, so we'll have the face uh, off really? to his left. Yeah. They just pit it against the side of the net? Uh, Can you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. It counts, I guess. Graffy, far huh. point. Then get down low. Brandon Fritz trying to get there. But he's got to move it away as it's picked up by Patrick Monix. He tried to get there first, but Monix moved it up ahead for Pyatt. Pyatt trying to squeeze his way to the front as Wilworth 
Tried to put one on Miller, but it goes off along the far half boards. Trying to move it out is Thomas Nearing, but it'll be picked up again by Mowing. Mowing setting it up behind the cage. It's cleared off into the near corner to Wilworth. Wilworth trying to move it away from the retrievers. And Fritz trying to move it up along the half boards. Having a little trouble. He's got two Rowan props on him. And he comes up and freed up to the retrievers. And that is Alec Hanek that's going to go off on a change after clearing it down to the prop zone. Dougherty putting it in, but not deep enough. And as it turned over to Zach Tracy. Zach Tracy had the recent goal for the Retrievers. Cutting in, taking a shot, and it just goes over the net. He had a perfect angle to cut in on it, and he got tripped up, no call. And now it'll be DJ Fadler sending it back into the neutral zone. Over to Yosu, who is wide open. Leaving it there for Tracy. Tracy comes in, takes a shot, and it's deflected out of play. And we'll have the stoppage with 2.58 to go here in the third period. Four to one, dogs. Time is running out on the Rowan University props. I like to point out that Eric Moen uh, hasn't been on the score sheet, but he has been a real, he, he has been everywhere on this. You've mentioned his main name many, many times. You could say he's a real fixture out there. He's given everything, including the kitchen sink. Uh, Fadler along the half horse far side, trying to move it through. But it'll be picked up by the props, trying to move it along the near side. And the props struggling to create some office here, offense here as Nikolai tried to put it in. But Nick Yost will pick his pocket and he'll carry on with it through the neutral zone. And it's along the right wing over to O'Connor. O.C. dropping it off for Tracy. And Tracy couldn't get a shot through. Yost pinching in down low. Fadler with a side angle try, and it does not make its way through. Because of Moen, again. Yeah, you Eric buy it for Mullen. looks, you buy it for life. <laughs> it's a He's Mullen. a fixture out there. Uh, ha, ha, I get it now. Yeah, it took you long enough. I know. Jeez. I wasn't going to waste that one. You kidding? Yeah. <laughs> Dan Durante with it now. Far circle. Trying to cut his way in. Trying to move the puck to the slot. But instead it got caught up by Rogers and fed out through the neutral zone. Retrievers creating it up at their own blue line and chipped all the way down into the Rowan zone as there's two minutes to play here in the third period. And it's Eric Moen yet again. Moving up along the near side boards. Schenk trying to move it out, but he's trapped up by Dan Armstrong with some support from Bloom. Bloom having some pushing and shoving going on here with Schenk, but they're going to break up here. Schenk's a little upset about that one. He's upset about the breakup. He is. 140 sad. left here in the third period. Sheng ch chasing it down in his own zone. We're down to 90 seconds here. And it's picked up at the blue line. Rafferty getting his clock cleaned by Sheng. Sheng using that motivation from Bloom, taking out Rafferty Bloom, and uh, Sheng playing a little sticksy. They're playing with each other's sticks there. Did you see that in the neutral zone? Well, I, I just thought that Bloom was a rolling stone because of Rafferty. <laughs> Good one, Johnny. 1-10 to go here in the third period. He's from Baker Street. As the Retrievers look to shore up this victory. And Cody Selbert sending it over to the far wing. DJ Fadler is deflected off of a props player. Goes down to Bennett. Bennett backhands it just in time as O'Connor was hot on his tail. He's trying to release it. It's Paulo moving it up along the side here. Along the right wing for Caulfield, but it's turned over to O'Connor. O'Connor up at the top of the blue line, looking to take his shot. Goes through to Bennett. Easy stick save. Bennett sticking Zach Tracy as he skated by. That puck went up high out of the glass and down the length of the ice. Ben Rafferty to find it back in his own zone. As it's over to Cody Selber. Selber along the glass and out in the neutral zone. And it's picked up by Dowerty. Dowerty trying to move it past O'Connor, but O'Connor sends it right back into the prop zone. This one is just about over, folks. 20 seconds to go. Sent up into the glass and into the neutral zone. O'Connor will pick it up, playing it back to Yost. Yost along the far wing for Selbert. And Selbert's just going to dump this one in. Not deep enough as Dougherty was there with the glove. Dougherty's going to send this one up high and down the ice. No icing with five seconds to go as Miller sets it up into the glass. And that'll do it, folks. Holy Family University, the UMBC Retrievers. The number five UMBC Retrievers have defeated the number two Rowan University Profs. Is that not their first loss of the season? This is the first loss of the season for the Rowan University Profs. What an accomplishment. Nothing like ending a streak at 11. Impressive. Impressive. 11 wins put together by Rowan University. They went to 11, but not to 12. UMBC stands tall. 4-1 the victory. Not even eking it out. They commanded this game from beginning to end. The shot tally finishes 35-28. to No doubt about it. That ranking should certainly stay at five, if not move up. Well, a very cordial handshake line here to conclude this game. Once again, the streak is over for the Rowan University Profs, and it was at the hands of the UMBC Retrievers.
Once again, our next broadcast will be here at the Reisterstown Sportsplex next Saturday as Georgetown comes to town. And that game will be at 4.30 and then a 5.15 game on Sunday against William Patterson University. I guess we'll cut it off here. John, any final thoughts? Well, it's good to be back in the saddle and back uh, on the with the headset. So I appreciate you having me on, Dave. And uh, if Shrems is ever out again, I'll be glad to fill his shoes. All right. Well, with that being said, for my production team and Phil, the camera guy, and John Baranowski, I'm David Stern saying good night, everybody. 4-1, to one, UMBC defeats Rowan University. We'll see you next week. And as always, don't stop believing.